Hello, wanted to give you a chance to see the new Auto-Tune, Auto-Teach, and Auto-Define programming from Cyber Optics for the SQ3000. So we're gonna create a new recipe. This means there's no library defined or we're not gonna use a default library or a pre-existing library. So it's all gonna be from scratch. So that really works well for the NPI guys, R&D guys, high volume, or excuse me, high mix, low volume guys, or batch manufacturing. So we're gonna import our SRF. We've used <clears throat> our third-party software, EPM, to basically translate the Gerber and CAD into an SRF file. So now we're gonna import the SRF file to build the program or recipe. So we're going to preview. This is our SRF. We're going to build it. Then we're going to load the image. So this image has already been captured by the machine using the different illumination settings required uh, for the different inspection tasks. The image is loaded. We're gonna inspect the fiducials. Everything lines up now. We're gonna come over here to the train tab. We're gonna click on the two wrenches to build. Now we're gonna start the auto tune and auto uh, teach process. So as it's going through this process, it's also gonna inspect what's on the board. This is an actual customer NPI board. So uh, we'll see what kind of defects it has on it, if any. So here you can see everything green passed. Everything that failed is in red. So I wanna take a look at what failed on this NPI board and during this auto teach and auto team programming. So we've got a lead here that failed, failed for low solder volume, double click. And as you can see, there is low volume with the fillet. I'm going to move to the next one. <clears throat> We're going to look at this capacitor. It's saying it failed for coplanarity or tilt, lift. And obviously you can see that it's lifted. Move to the next one. So we've got one failing and of course, look at it, it's a tombstone. So it did not include this defect in the histogram or into the history of what components with this package during the auto tune and auto teach process. So of, co of course the leaders are gonna fail as well because there is no solder fillet. Move to the next one. We've got two basically in Y offset. So we have one that's higher, one that's lower compared to the one that's placed correctly. And of course the leads are not gonna pass on these two. So we'll just move on to the next one. So here we've got one for offset. We've got two for coplanarity. Take a look. And of course you can see there is some lift on that component. Look at the leads. We're failing 11 out of 20. So as I look at this, I can tell that I don't want this system auto programming or auto tuning based off of where it's accepting the volume of solder. So I'm gonna do a manual tune here and just to show you how simple and easy it is, I'm gonna to adjust to where I just want the solder fillet. 
I'm gonna extend my reference area a little bit. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna inspect all. There's 20, they're all failing. And what the auto tune and auto teach process does is it takes everything that's on the board or a history of what's on the board and it basically compiles a histogram. As you can see, it all falls pretty consistently right over here. So what the auto tune and auto teach function capability does in the auto programming is it basically clicks on that and adjust your tolerances based off of your volumes that are currently or the history of what it's finding on the board. So when we come down here, inspect all, set all, they pass. So here we're gonna look, we're doing a blob analysis that failed. And here you can see we've caught a solder ball. You can use this tool to actually pixelize the area of failure. So you can see that it's picked up this out gas solder ball. Here we have three failing, one for coplanarity, two for coplanarity. So three for lift. And that's it. So now I'd like to show you how we train and teach the inspection tasks for text. So basically we're gonna come in here and adjust our box around the text that we want to inspect. We're gonna build it. We're gonna inspect it. We're gonna inspect them all. It likes that one. It doesn't like these. And it's because of polarity. So they're failing for polarity. If we don't want polarity, we can go into the template, turn off polarity, come back to the training set, refresh, inspect. They all pass at that point. Turn back on polarity, inspect, the three fail. So as you noticed before, all five passed with one example. And this is the benefit of our AI squared technology or our artificial intelligence where we use autonomous image interpretation. So that helps you reduce your false fails. So now what I wanna do is show you the new capability in the new release software to where we can combine images to really make text pop or pull out for inspection capabilities. So you can see how this is uh, dark text on a dark image. So I can come over here, turn on image combination. So we can do what we consider a whiteout image, or we can reverse that. make it a gray image or a blacked out image. So now we can actually make the text stand out a lot more. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna build this text inspection. I'm gonna build it, inspect it with one example, it likes it. I'm gonna inspect them all. It likes all of them. I'm gonna define it. Now in the model editor, I can come over here and I can actually look at what the system is looking for. And our AI squared is looking for any variation in this text. Look for another one. I'm going to look at the template. Does the dual illumination help? It does. Build it. Inspect it. It likes it. Inspect them all. It likes all of them with only one example. And again, going back to the model editor, this is what the AI squared is looking for. 
and the variation of the font, the thickness, or how the text is printed. We can also go in here and look at grayscale. We can go into a gradient or grayscale. We can inspect for color. So we can do multiple things to pull out or make text pop. So after being able to see the new capability of the Auto Teach and Auto Tune program, I think you can see the cost advantages as well as the saving advantages of the SQ3000 with being able to program in minutes, not hours. Uh, we're actually almost down to seconds in this actual program. So from that standpoint, it has really saved a lot of our pre-existing customers time with programming, especially like I mentioned in the R&D or NPI world. Uh, high volume, low mix guys with multiple different assemblies. So from that standpoint, the new version 12 and forward automatic tuning, auto programming is really something to consider with the SQ3000. So that's how easy and simple it is to use the auto tune, auto teach and auto define programming capability on the SQ3000 multifunction, modular, AOI, SPI and coordinate measurement system.